Hi everyone, we're glad you found us. I'm Susan Barton coming to you from Broad Ideas Press and I am with Tyler Hogan who is not only our president but Tyler is the author of the book we'll be sharing with you today, Demystifying Learning Styles. <laughs> there it is. So Tyler, tell us what is the backstory of Demystifying Learning Styles? So I, I speak at homeschool conventions pretty regularly and the, the last couple of shows that I went to my most popular talk by like a lot was this topic of learning styles and uh, it, to the point where it was like standing room only in some of these venues. And I just saw how hungry people were for good, solid, scientific, but also applicable and useful information on learning styles and how to use them in your homeschool. So just seeing the need, I spent the time to, to do the research and build kind of a how-to manual on learning styles. How sound did you find the science that's out there? <laughs> so it's kind of all over the place. Um, there's a lot of scientific studies, uh, as, as scientific as they can be with, with a topic that's difficult to study, like how people learn. Um, but there's a lot of good science out there, but there's also a lot of old science out there or sometimes just old wives tales out there. So there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of studies that conflict with one another. It really is, is very confusing. And I think, you know, the average parent just does not have uh, the time to sort through and sift through the good information from the bad information or the outdated information. As I was doing my research, I found a lot of the things that were, you know, on my shelf even, um, they were just very outdated, you know, and, and not even that they were super old. Like sometimes it's, a book from the 70s or the 90s or early 2000s, but there's just so much research that's being done on this topic all the time. Uh, I wanted to be able to put something out there that condensed all of the best information that we have available into the most usable format possible. Well, and you're touching on the fact that we have heard some things early in some of this research that may not necessarily be true or based on scientific research. And so it can become so disheartening as a parent to have heard something and you apply that in your own homeschool and your instruction in a classroom or at home and it doesn't work and we become disheartened. So to really know those things that are now tried and tested and we understand are scientifically valid just is so important for people who care a great deal about raising up children who love to learn. Absolutely. So yeah, we, we spend some time in the book doing some, some myth busting. That's important. Who, who is this book really intended and geared for, Tyler? It's for homeschool parents. Uh, it's for classroom and co-op teachers, Sunday school teachers, uh, aunts and uncles. I mean, if, if you have a kid in your life or any class that you're teaching and you want to impart something valuable to them, it's for you because everybody is always teaching, uh, whether they realize it or not, and everybody around us is learning and we wanna make sure that we're not just giving the right messages, but giving them in a way that is going to stick. I think that's a really salient point because this doesn't just apply to young students or you know, people who are in school, but it, this, is, this is true for all learners of all ages. So you know, whether you're a Sunday school teacher or a pastor or a counselor, that these, are, these are things important for us to understand about how we process information in general. So I know this big body of research is out there. How long is this book? <laughs> Um, not super long. It's, uh, it's, it's got a pretty slim profile. It's down to about 70 pages, so it's very easy to digest. Uh, the chapters are pretty short, and at the end of each chapter we go over, hey, here are the key points, the main takeaways. Um, there's a little two-page handout in the back that's just a summary of all the key points in the book, so it's a kind of a how-to manual and a quick reference guide. Um, it's not hard to get through. You could sit down with it and, and pour through it in an evening and feel like you digested it pretty well, I think. That is definitely a win. So what <laughs> did you decide to include in the contents of the book? So it's got a number of different important concepts from uh, neuroscience, cognitive science, and a couple of different major learning styles, theories, and models. 
So uh, our first chapter, we talk about uh, the power and the science of memory. So we talk about like, how do you make a memory? What, what's the process going on in your brain of moving something from short-term memory into long-term memory? And how do you dig that back out again? So uh, that's chapter one. Chapter two, we talk about the power of concentration. Mm -hmm. And we talk about uh, Dunn and Dunn's theories about environment and how they affect our learning. So that's, that's kind of a, an easily overlooked aspect of learning styles is well, what, what does our environment do to how we learn? How, how does one kid react to different environmental conditions uh, in, in their ability to concentrate and process information? Uh, we talk in chapter three about motivation and the, the VAC model of learning styles. So that's, uh, that's probably the most commonly referenced one is the visual auditory kinesthetic, the, the VAK model. Um, and so we talk about how to use that and the ways in which it can be used effectively and things that it's sometimes used for, which isn't very helpful. Um, when to appeal to your child's learning style preferences and when to challenge them and, and do something that's going to stretch them. Uh, so we talk about that quite a bit in chapter three. Chapter four, we talk about how we grow in our skills and uh, in our intelligences. So we talk about Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences, and we talk about some educational psychology with developing a growth mindset um, and what it, what it takes um, for us to feel like we can learn. And then our last chapter is on curriculum. So we, we do a little bit of discussing uh, curriculum design and how to find good curriculum that'll be helpful no matter what your students' learning styles are, uh, how to just pick and choose things that are gonna be a good fit for your family or for your students. And then we spend a little time just kind of tying it all together and going back over those key points. You definitely distilled a lot of information to get all of those topics into a 70 page book. That's fantastic. It, it's very concentrated. We tried to make it just as, as practical as we could possibly make it. So we, we don't get into the weeds unless there's a really good reason to. So would you share with us maybe a learning style accommodation that made a difference for you as you were a child studying? Sure, yeah. I mean, my mom was particularly skilled. I, I think for her it was very intuitive, um, but she was really good at uh, making environmental accommodations for me and my brother. Um, so like when I was really little, we would do a lot of family read-alouds. And I know this would just drive some parents up the wall, but I always had to be moving and doing something with my hands as a kid. Like it, I was very kinesthetic in that way, um, but I also had strong auditory preferences. So I would be listening and absorbing everything that she was reading aloud, but my hands would be occupied with, you know, silly putty or Legos or, you know, just some quiet toy. And that kept me from, you know, just going crazy and wandering around the room trying to do acrobatics while she was trying to read and allowed me to be able to still have my hands occupied but focus on what she was reading so something simple like that made a big difference for me as a kid she was able to get through way more books because she made that accommodation than if she was trying to get me to you know sit still and be quiet and try and listen that way like that just doesn't work for everybody some kids have to move some kids have to see some kids have to to process things verbally with you and interrupt you and that's not because they're you know, having poor social skills, that's just because they need to, to talk in order to learn. So there's lots of very little things that can make a big difference when we start seeing them through this lens of learning styles. Well, I think that's one of the things that any sort of educator, whether you're a homeschool parent or you're a Sunday school teacher or whatever it is that has brought you to demystifying learning styles, that you'll have this aha moment that you can make the slightest adaptation to your approach and yet have a really significant impact in mm -hmm. the, the reach of your instruction. Absolutely. Tyler, I'm so sorry. No, no it's fine. Go ahead. Are you still speaking on demystifying learning styles? Yeah, yeah, I'm always up for you know, either conventions or webinars. So if you're a, an event organizer and you want me to come talk on learning styles for a bit, feel free to drop me a line. That sounds great. Well, if you'd like to have a copy of Demystifying Learning Styles at your home, um, 
if you are purchasing in a retail environment, just visit any one of your favorite homeschool suppliers and uh, check for Demystifying Learning Styles by Tyler Hogan. If uh, they happen to not carry it, send them a line and say, hey, I saw that um, you have Bright Ideas Press products, but I'm looking for Demystifying Learning Styles so that they can get that in stock for you. If you uh, have any challenge whatsoever finding what you need, just send us a note at contactbrightideaspress.com and we'll be glad to point you in the right direction. But if you happen to be uh, someone with, um, if you're an admin at a school or a teacher or um, even a leader at the church, or if you um, have a co-op and you would like to uh, introduce your faculty, your leaders, your teachers to um, the concepts of some really solid science behind learning styles, give us a call and we'll help you get a volume order placed directly with us. Again, contact at brightideaspress.com. Tyler, we thank you so much for just seeing the need and taking the time to weed through this data for um, parents and teachers of all types. So thank you for having. Uh, it, it was a pleasure. I mean, I, I've got five kids of my own and I want to be a good dad and a good teacher to them. And I know all of us want to be better at our, our many jobs, our many hats, and hopefully this book can help make a difference for you too. Thank you. I appreciate your time today. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Thanks, Susan.